Hi there, Christian from Spitfire Audio here. Today's tutorial is how you can take chops you've developed with your string programming and apply them directly to brass parts to give your string arrangements greater colourful diversity. So I'm going to take a composition I filmed live from my Chamber Strings tutorial and literally revoice regions from this to give us a richer palette of sounds with the brass. You'll see that to use this section as a rich choral element, not just a big bombastic force, isn't that big a leap from string writing. So that's the arrangement uh, without any brass. I've dialed up uh, a selection of stuff from our Spitfire Symphonic Brass Library and I'm going to start just going through the arrangement and working out what I can revoice for the brass. Lovely plaintive flat handouts. Now what would they sound like if we were to put them with the uh, trumpets? So I'm going to take the region, the MIDI data, but also all of the expression data that I programmed with it. Let's have a listen to that. What a mournful sound. Okay, so I'm going to now just double it up with the horns. I'm going to take them down the octave and then I'm just going to kill the beginning of it. So it starts with the trumpet and then the horn will come in. So let's just get rid of these ones here. Thanks, bye bye. And bye bye to you. The other thing that's uh, worth looking at is with the trumpets, you can actually control the vibrato. So this is without the vibrato. I think I actually prefer it with the vibrato, it's kind of a lovely British sound to it. Eh? Okay, so that's the first section done. Let's have a little look at the harmonics. I think the trumpet sounds great on its own. So just gonna change the modulation values for the harmonics so they're a bit quieter coming later.
Okay, let's move along to the next section. Okay, so here we've got a cello and bass. playing in intervals. I'm just going to move that up there, mute it, and duplicate the bass part in the cello so they're playing at octaves. So listen to that. Let's uh, just listen to that on its own. And what's great about things like trombones is you can put them in uh, kind of dense writing right down at the bottom and they still really um, stick through. They still have a, they have a warmth and they, they can take away from a dirge that you create by having rich uh, lower arrangements in the strings. Let's have a look at all three together. It's a slightly more regal sound. Brilliant. Let's match some of that richness with the tuba. Oh, that's not uh, the sound, that's a short. So just on this articulation switcher, switching to a monophonic legato patch. Let's hear all those together. See that all the expression data that I programmed for the strings works with the brass too. Oh. Really rich, colourful sound. Okay, I think we can uh, take those pits, dupe them in the uh, uh, the tubers, give them a little pumping life, and again, real richness as well. Oh, I love it. Okay, and I think that we can actually repurpose these string shorts to another instrument. I think we should uh, try them on the trumpet. I think it might sound quite um, Jerry Goldsmithy. So let's have a listen. Just mute the ones up there. Oh, I love it! It's like pattern. Let's reduce the levels a bit. And I, I'm going to be shameless and do a, a Jerry Goldsmith trick. Oh, love it! Lots of reverb on that bit more than I'd usually put on the shorts. And uh, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a, a vintage sounding tape echo, something that he used to do, did it on Pattern, did it on uh, Alien. Uh, and Very goldsmithy sound. I want to introduce more variety in this section, so I'm going to get the horn shorts, but put them down into their natural range, which is uh, going to be an octave lower than the trumpets. And get rid of the beginning, take them down a bit. Love it. Okay, next bit, we have this big cello line. <laughs> And I'm going to put that in a horn. Now, the thing you have to watch uh, when you're changing string programming for brass programming is that brass gets a lot brighter and brasher the louder it gets. So if it goes too quiet, it can really disappear. So I'm just pulling up the expression data. Otherwise, it really does disappear. Sounds a bit queer, um, but uh, great from kind of plaintive to. Great stuff. 
I'm also going to get the uh, trumpet to join in halfway through as well, and that can go up the octave. They uh, kind of like cellos and basses. They're used to playing an octave apart. It's a very natural uh, uh, kind of orchestration for them. So. <laughs> Give you for giving him that line, but uh, if you've got it, flaunt it. Okay, this next bit, I'm going to take this uh, inner harmony and put them with the bones. That sounds a bit queer. You'll see that I've layered them both the bass bones and the tenor bones, and yes, they're on legatos, which is why they sounded queer. So here we go. Let's hear what that sounds like. It's quite high for their range, so let's take them down. That's will work better in the uh, the horns there. So down two octaves from where we were. Okay, let's uh, temper some of this brassiness. Just going to make it slowly build throughout the section, following the similar lines I programmed with the, uh, the strings. So again, I've not uh, not been doing any of my mucking around with my controller. This has all been with the mouse today. Okay, next up, I'm going to take the bass part, put that in the tubers. Nice and rich. Take them down an octave. Oh. you have to be careful with uh, just porting over string stuff if you take the expression down too much the instrument really can disappear it's got a much much more volatile uh, dynamic range which can really disappear into the, the murk so let's just have a look at this just smooth this out a bit okay yeah. them into the trumpets up we go up the octave and maybe just towards the end still sounds so beautiful there awesome just a little bit too high for him at the top there so let's find another note lovely on reflection i probably will keep him in all the way let's make it nice and brassy then and that's it really just grab some string parts revoiced it and let's see how it sounds
Okay, so that was just a very quick demonstration. I'd obviously spend about a day getting that right, smoothing out those levels, balancing it, and uh, possibly sorting out some of that voice stealing. I could hear there, freezing some tracks and stuff. But thanks as always for watching.